today we're making a cedar love seat that looks good with or without cushions. As with many of my outdoor furniture projects, I'm going to be using cedar bumper, in this case 2x4s and fence pickets from my home improvement store. These come rough cut, so I used my table saw to clean up the 2x4s, and then I ripped them in halves that ended up being about 1.75 inch squares. I'm going to split the project into two sections, the leg slash armrests, and then the seat slash back sections. I'm also going to tell you up front that if I did this again, I would have angled the back seat a bit more for comfort and also for looks. I would have also had to extend the armrests to support it, and I think this actually would have looked better. I rough cut all my pieces to length using my crosscut sled, and then I cut the leg pieces down to final dimensions. For these joints in the legs and armrest, I'm going to be using some half lap joints which I can cut using a couple jigs that I've made for my table saw. You can also do this with just a circular saw or a table saw by setting your blade depth to half the thickness of your board and then making repeat cuts across the board to remove the material. There's a lot of other ways of doing this too, but I've got the jig so it's a bit faster using them. I'm going to be joining everything in this project with Total Boat Thixo Epoxy. I've found that it's more durable than any wood glue I've used for exterior projects. And I also like how it's thick in texture so that it fills any gaps. So, you know, read mistakes that I've made in my cuts. With the legs cured, I measured out where the seat and back section is going to sit relative to the legs. Once I found an orientation that worked for my cushions and just for visuals, I traced out the angles. It's a good idea to do this after you've made your legs or do the other section first and then make your legs so that you can make field measurements to ensure that things are just right. I then cut both of those angles, so the angle itself and then the inverse, I think that's right, using my uh, table saw miter sled. It can be a bit confusing, but hey, I got there in the end. Almost all the seat ribs, so those you see here, which are the vertical sections of the back and seat, are connected to the horizontal sections using pocket holes. Make sure you drill those face up since they're going to be covered by slats anyway. I used more epoxy and screwed them together. Once they cured, I trimmed both ends to length. Then I cut the vertical pieces that connect all the ribs together, and I cut another half lap for the top back piece on either side. You can kind of see here how it's gonna to fit together. Then I just epoxied and screwed everything together, except for the lap joints, which I clamped. While that cured, I ripped down a bunch of strips which I think ended up being about an inch in width from my fence pickets to use for the seat and back. I attached these with epoxy and brad nails using a spacer in between each row as I went. I trimmed down all the excess slats with my track saw. This gives it a cleaner look and it's also faster than cutting everything down ahead of time. 
After some thorough sanding, I dry fit the legs. Then I drilled and countersunk a pilot hole, applied some epoxy, and clamped and screwed the legs on. The front doesn't have any screws, it's just held on by epoxy, so I made sure to clamp that extra securely. I drilled some holes in the front gap by your legs since there's no way for water to escape that little channel. Unfortunately, one of my legs warped a little bit, but it was a bit too late to do too much about it, so I kind of kept going. I also thought that the legs were a bit long, so I trimmed those down with my circular saw. Finally, I applied a couple coats of teak oil, which really is satisfying. Pops out those grains, especially on the half laps. And with that, we're done. I'd like to know what you guys think about this project in the comments below. Let me know what you would do differently. If I made it again, I would, as I said before, change the angle of the back to make it a bit more slanted which would give it a bit more comfortable feel and also I think would be visually more appealing. I would also probably switch out that front seat support, the horizontal one, to a two x four instead of half of a two x four since you can't see it anyway. But I will say this is really visually appealing up close and personal and it looks great with or without a cushion. It's also pretty comfortable even without a cushion. I'm also pretty happy with how strong this thing is even with those thinner supports. All right, if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, comment down below, you know how to do it. I'll include as much documentation as I can in the video description, so check that out. And as always, thanks, and I'll see you in the next episode.